tonight on The Candy Show. Slam poet, Reed is Real Jones. And indie rockers, In Flight Safety. experience of flying. I just had my hip replaced, first of all, so I'm dealing now with every time I go through the security window, I set it off. Now, being native at the airport is not easy to begin with, <laughs> but having your hip send the thing off, and because I don't, you know, I'm not an old lady and I don't look like this, they sometimes don't want to believe me when I say, look, I've had my hip replaced. That's, that's why it's, it's beeping. I don't have a sidearm. I'm not in any way armed. Beep, 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 beep. It's the hip, it's the hip. This is why it's... they just don't want to let me through. They're just all over me. And I'm thinking, my God, can't they just trust that the white half of me is going to oppress the native half of me enough and just let me go? <laughs> and on top of the whole thing, where am I? I'm at the Halifax airport. Where am I going? I'm going to Sydney, Nova Scotia on a 12-seater plane. You know, when the Taliban decides to hit us, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be a plane with two capers and a Mi'kmaq comic heading up to Sydney. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. I finally get on the plane. Then when I get on the plane, I have to deal with the whole process of finding my seat and then fitting into my seat. See, I can see some people are relating already. The best part about doing that is, you know, when you get on the plane, this is, this is how you have fun with the whole process, is you just watch everybody, especially when you know, you're a big woman like me, and you watch them, and everybody's sitting in their seat like this. <laughs> like somehow, if they don't make eye contact with me, I'm not gonna sit down next to them. <laughs> like that's gonna mean that's not my seat. So every now and then I just like to, Give them a little shot, you know, just to surprise them. We have an incredible guest coming up. He is an award-winning playwright, poet, actor. But what I love most is his slam poetry, his spoken word art. Welcome to The Candy Show, Reed Israel Jones. This is a shark's tale. About the time I was in the city of God, chilling at the Hotel Rwanda, planning an Italian job. CB4 playing on the radio. We smoking Spike Lee joints long as the Green Mile. Scarface was half-baked. He started playing reindeer games with Roger and me. He was speaking Spanglish. I got lost in translation. The thermostat at Fahrenheit 9-11. That's when my cellular rang. It was John Q and these white chicks calling from the phone booth outside the Players Club on Arlington Road. They was waiting for the biker boys. But it was rush hour. They got stuck in traffic. So they get on the bus before it's gump out Crooklyn and the heist is looking as good as it gets. The score takes place the day after tomorrow. There's just one day left. So I went down to the casino, Goodwill hunting for the last of my crime partners. I checked my clockers and it was time to meet the Falkers. So I passed the slots and saw Harry Potter and the prisoner at Aspam playing blackjack with the elephant man. They're all born supremacists, resident evil, with a grudge against ordinary people. I finally found the Falkers in custody, Team America, World Police. The mod squad was there and SWAT was everywhere. I swear it was training day. The whole police academy was there. All of my insiders got knocked off. Scarface fled, thought he was hard to kill, and got popped in the head by a kindergarten cop. Now he's half past dead. <laughs> John Q and them white chicks, they got locked in the panic room, and all of my crew became state property. I almost became state property, too. So I pulled out my big Lebowski, full metal jackets, lock stock with two smoking barrels. And that's when Columbo said, baby boy, 
I'm the real McCoy. I got all of your boys in the hood. You're the last of the Mohicans, the last samurai, the last emperor, the last man standing on Schindler's list. You do the right thing, you turn yourself in. I said, look who's talking, Pulp Fiction. I'm a menace to society. I'm gonna die hard in a field of glory under a vanilla sky. I'm almost famous, I want my 15 minutes. So I pulled out my naked gun and the room went pitch black. So I did the chicken run all the way back to Caddyshack yelling, catch me if you can. <laughs> a white man kid jumped onto the Amistad and set sail for the deep blue sea in search of the city by the sea. But that's another toy story from my motorcycle diary. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, two and three and a half minutes of movie titles. How do you not trip up? It's difficult, a lot of rehearsing, but you know, practice and you get it. I love these underachievers. <laughs> so of all the things that you do, the playwriting, all of that, why is this kind of your passion that you always come back to? Because uh, the people are there, you know, there's there's response right away. Like I uh, make movies too, but the response is right here. You write something, show's coming up in a couple of weeks, you get on stage and you see how people respond and it's pretty immediate, so. Nice. And actually, I want to thank you for having me on your show. So I brought you a little gift to show my appreciation. Ooh. Thank you, Corey. Oh, ho, ho, ho. What's so, this uh, now? So we got you uh, this T-shirt here. So I'm um, so Scotian. And, uh, oh, that's sweet. So you sweet. Yeah. Let's get one of those. Thank you so much. Cool. Thanks for having me. All right, everybody. Reed is real Jones. I've had this dream um, of the candy show since I was uh, somewhere around 14, 15 years old. I grew up on this mountain in the hill in Point Lenin, New Brunswick, the youngest of a really big family, and everybody in that family always telling me I could do whatever I wanted to do and I could be whatever I wanted to be. And so I've dreamt about this for a long, long time, and it's finally come together tonight. Now, I was sad because none of my family could actually be here for it. And so I'm sitting here today doing a little pre-shoot, talking about how sad I am that my family can't be here. I so wish that I could have had the money to charter a bus to go up and get them and bring them so that they could... Oh, sorry, I don't want to cry while I'm doing this. So that they could see what they've created. Because this is really... <clears throat> This is their work of art. They just did it through me. And my director says, turn around and take a look behind you. <laughs> That's not <cool. laughs> you, No, no! <laughs> oh, well. One of the best gifts I ever could have received my beautiful mother is here tonight.